Hey guys, Veronica here. I'm standing, squatting, in front of one of my experiments in the forest. Uh, we're back in the forest gardens today, and this is a little garden I decided to put together about a week or so ago, just because I am running out of space in the greenhouse, and I needed to get some plants out and start really pressure testing some of the methods and theories that I'm playing with in my head. So. Um, these are all peppers. Well, there's a couple of things in here, but we'll get to that. But for the most part, this bed was built to accommodate peppers. Now, it may look really dark right now, but that's because we're about less than an hour to sunset, and all of the trees on this side of the forest are blocking the sun, so it's really shaded at this point in the day. In the morning hours to midday to even um, early afternoon, this space actually gets a fair amount of sun because there's a big hole in the canopy above me right here. And a lot of light filters through the other parts of the canopy around since the sun moves across this way. So I decided that this would be a good spot in the forest to test out growing peppers. Now one of the biggest problems we have here in Texas, according to my dad, is that when you get into the summer months you have two main issues. One is that it gets so hot you can't keep crops watered to save your life. So by working with the soil layer in the forest with all of the um, humus and just the forest duff and the leaf mulch, I'm hoping to kind of mitigate that um, the heat issue that the roots tend to suffer from, especially when it comes to things like peppers. The other issue that we have here in Texas is that we get these crazy hailstorms like out of nowhere when all of these storms blow through um, the ones that, you know, kick up tornadoes and whatnot. So we'll get a lot of rain, but we'll also get really damaging hail. So even though the canopy is open to light, there's actually a fair amount of branches right above this particular bed, which I'm hoping will help break the fall of the hail and protect all of these plants so that they don't get destroyed during these storms. Now this is all an experiment, as I just said, um, but my goal between this and the next garden I'm about to show you is to prove that it's worth it to plant trees out in the pasture field area that we have here in order to kind of help protect crops in these capacities by shading them a little bit from sun in the hottest points of the day. So that midday sort of on, giving them gradual shade. Um, and also to protect them from things like hail and other parts of weather that <laughs> may be damaging like high winds. So as you can see, this is sort of on a slope um, just a very gentle slope, but that actually, between that and the little bit of tree coverage I have behind me here, that helps to protect these guys from higher winds so that they're less likely to bend and break. Now, we'll see what happens in the long run, but in this area I have a couple of shishito plants. There's both new babies as well as a couple of overwintered ones just to see how they compare as far as fruiting and growth. I mean, there's a lot of experiments going on in the same space, but that's how we do things. Um, so there's the shishitos. There's all of these, you can see all these little horseradish babies popping up. Uh, I put in just a couple of roots and those come up really fast. Um, there's actually a little mushroom bed that's going on back here. So maybe if we get into a really wet spell with conditions for fruiting, there's both um, some oyster mushroom blocks as well as the oak stumps in the middle have been um, sort of lazily inoculated with shiitake mushrooms. So we'll see if those come through in the fall or potentially next year. But it's, you know, it's a good way to kind of use space. Um, I really try when I'm planting a bed, whether it's in the forest or in the field or in the yard, to plant as much of the soil as possible. And that's for two reasons. One is because we want that plant coverage to shade our soil so that our soil microbes are protected from things like heat and intense weather. The other is, if you are evenly watering an entire bed, then it's more likely that your plants are going to get even water and it's not going to be sucked away from them by the dry soil around them. So in order for you to avoid dealing with that, you know, just watering the plant and then watering the next plant and having that dry soil between them, the best way I've found to avoid that is by planting so much that you have to water all of those bits of dry soil and then it basically will maintain itself a little more effectively and you won't have your plants drying out as fast. So there's shishitas in the middle, there's the horseradish as we mentioned, a couple of different kinds of mushrooms, and then I just have different herbs dotting around the borders here as well as some onions. I really like putting in when I'm working with this forest area 
and it was something I kind of played with in my old garden as well, is to put in really pungent herbs that most browsers are not going to like around your borders. And what I found is that a lot of times things like rabbits and squirrels and I don't know about deer yet, but I'm hoping deer as well, they'll kind of taste the plants that are along the edges if that's the only greenery in the area. And then what happens is they taste it, they don't like the flavor, they move on. Like they're not going to browse throughout that bed. They just kind of go, okay, like that's not great. So I mean, some of them might if they're really desperate, but for the most part, the smaller wildlife tends to kind of taste whatever's along the edge and then be like, eh, not for me and keep going. So this is the bed that's been constructed in the forest. It's just a very crude construction. Um, I only put the borders in so I know where I've planted in case we start getting hot and the forest floor doesn't feel moist enough to support these guys, then I can know where to water without overwatering too far on the borders and screwing a lot of stuff up potentially. So we're going to move over to the garden that's in the yard that is working within this concept as well and talk about that one a little. Now we're in the other garden I was talking about, and this is a kind of test garden that's in the corner of the yard. Now my dad approached me the other day when he was mowing the grass and said, hey, do you want to make a garden in the corner of the yard? The soil looks really good. And I, of course, said yes, because once again, there's really big trees overhead. Now these don't have any holes in the canopy like the garden in the forest. And so I wanted to test those against each other just to see if one worked better than the other because my ultimate goal is to get tree coverage in this field to protect small plants from things like hail, high wind, and intense heat. So these ones will be a lot better protected than the forest because they have this intense canopy over the top and they get a lot more light from the sides because it's open but they also get more wind from the sides because it's open. So there's a couple of variables at play here and we get to see what happens as we go deeper into the summer. Now the sun rises basically behind me and it comes across that south facing in that direction. So it's coming across that way. They're getting a lot of light during the day, but once it hits that high point, they're basically shaded. It's dappled shade, but it's pretty intense shade. And then it kind of goes, you know, filtered light until we get really late in the day, maybe an hour before sunset. It gets one more blast and then it's done. And I like where this is going because I think that protecting these guys from the most intense heat of the day, especially when we get into like June, July, August, September, and we have those 100 plus days, that's gonna help a lot. Now, since I wasn't working with forest soil, but the soil was nice here, I decided to do a kind of modified deep mulch um, bed in this corner. So there is a layer of cardboard underneath the compost and the mulch, and I'm hoping that that helps um, keep these guys a little more evenly moist as we move deeper into the dry season when it's difficult to keep things watered. The other issue that's in this space potentially is that there's a lot of wind that moves from the north and the south through this area and until the melons on that fence and the tomatoes on this fence start to grow and fill in the trellises or their fences then there's not really any wind protection for these guys so we might see some breakage. There were a few that I did a little bit of pruning on, but for the most part, I managed to find a lot of peppers this year that were in really great shape. They were already branching out nicely. And so quite a few of them I just left as is. I'm not even pulling fruit off of them or flowers because I want to see what happens. And I don't want to screw with the variables too much on this. Um, I know that they'd probably get faster, deeper roots were I to take off the fruit and flowers, but I know that also um, it might be a little easier to prove that you can grow in shade if they're fruiting and flowering earlier. So I left them on <laughs> this time and we'll see what happens. Now, for all I know, when the melons and the tomatoes on either side, because there are three rows here, when those start filling in their fence trellises, they might completely shade these guys and then we might be in a pickle as far as them getting enough light. But it's all a big experiment and we don't know what's going to happen and hopefully it will work out and there won't be a big enough storm to knock this whole limb down on the garden and ruin everything. And at the end of it all, either this one or the forest one will prove that adding some trees to the field for all of the reasons I listed is a really good idea. So um, I think that's basically it on this. It's all one really big experiment. It's like um, you just 
don't know what's going to happen, but you know, I have a couple of theories just bouncing around in my head. Like, I think that there's something to be said about the temperature influencing um, production as well as the amount of light that they're able to get. So as long as you live in a really bright and hot or warm climate, then they may actually be receiving enough light. But I don't know if that's true. I'm just, I'm playing with a couple of ideas here. Um, I wanted to share those to see who has any thoughts on them specifically, um, or any thoughts on any of this in general. I know that this is very tight planting. I plan on managing this one pretty intensely. There's some little inner plantings that you can kind of see with like fennel and caraway. There's lettuce, there's different herbs and stuff. And I'll be adding more as we go just to diversify this. So it's not in you know, this one big row of peppers waiting to be destroyed by some insect, but um, yeah, hit me up with your comments or questions on my harebrained idea. Um, if you like the sort of content, if you want to see what happens to this garden, if you're just the sort of person who watches hockey for the fights and wants to see something like horribly fail later on in the season, then hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at FlavorKit because I'm always poking around the garden and sharing things in daily stories and we have a lot of fun over there. So until next time, happy gardening.